All right. Happy Friday, everybody. It's May 3rd. Hope you're doing well wherever you may be dialing in on this lunch hour on the West Coast, early dinner on the East Coast, or probably even later into your Friday evening for those of you who are joining us from Europe. My name is Albert Chen. I am the founder of Albert's List, and I'll be your host today. And with me is my co-host, Mohit Athana, who is an entrepreneur, real estate investor, and a sales professional. And today we're going to talk about how to build your side hustle with artificial intelligence. We're going to talk about how you can use your specialized skill set, uh, whether you're a marketer, finance person, salesperson, technologist, or anywhere in between to use AI to build a side hustle that can help you uh, build additional income during this time of uncertainty and economic craziness. You'll hear about the you'll hear about all of that during this webinar today, in addition to a boot camp that we're going to be launching in the next week and a half. As a reminder, this recording or this webinar will be recorded and it'll be available on our YouTube channel. And we'll be also sharing it to you via Eventbrite and through email, email follow-up. Without further ado, Mohit, over to you. Thanks so much. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Let me start uh, kicking off my screen. Cool. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, they can. All right. What's up, everybody? My name is Mohit. Um, as Albert said, uh, I am an entrepreneur, a real estate investor, and uh, most importantly, I sell software. So sales is kind of in my life and blood. Um, Albert has been so gracious to let us use his time. For the, the next hour, we're going to basically talk about creating side hustles, why people should create a side hustle and how you can use artificial intelligence. And then we'll go over our um, bootcamp offering, kind of what's involved, um, the modules, et cetera. And we even have a special treat at the end. So stay, stay uh, with us uh, until the very end. So let's recap. Uh, this is the second webinar that we're doing uh, for this, for the Scale Your Skill Set. Scale Your Skill Set is a six-week boot camp to help you actually create a side hustle and you'll have office hours. And the goal is for you to actually have a tangible deliverable at the end. And we'll help work with you to ideate what exactly you could offer, how you can get your first customers, who are your customers, and a cheap way to actually go and try and test your market and to iterate through a couple ideas. So let's recap. Layoffs are insane right now. I'm sure that in the last year or two years, we've all probably heard of someone getting laid off. Uh, comment below if you guys have gotten laid off. How did that make you feel? I'm very curious. I know that it sucks. Uh, I've gotten laid off before. Yeah, exactly. Albert, yep, makes you feel frustrated. Um, no video besides a blurry ceiling. I can see my screen. Okay, layoff in October. Yep, job search is terrible. Uh, a lot of fake jobs at will, getting old. Okay, so if uh, if you're a student, I mean, this is probably one of the hardest job markets that we've had. Um, and a lot of people are offshoring and a lot of people are, you know, getting aged out. And the number of venture capital dollars is, I don't think it's been this low since like 2009 makes us feel unworthy okay yes i feel like a lot of people's identity is wrapped up in whatever they do so whenever you lose your job then it, it makes you feel a little bit worthless some people t tend to tie up their identity with um with compensation which is not oh best time of my life kelvin i love how uh you're spinning it on its head and having a great attitude about it so kind of the point of of, of this is that that layoffs are insane it makes sense to diversify your income. And last week, we kind of talked about side hustles. We're focusing more on digital side hustles. Let's talk about why. So reasons for a side hustle are there's financial freedom and it's scalable. Uh, there's some exit value if people didn't know about that. Once again, it's to diversify your income streams and it's to prepare for an uncertain future, which who knows how long this tech bear market will last. Um, so why you, so everyone's got a talent, right? Everyone is hired for something. 
from their employer. You have skills that are valued in your W-2 job. If you're an engineer, if you're a salesperson, you're obviously have some sort of commercial skill. And you should also leverage into your network and see what your skills are. You can take a calculated risk where a side hustle is not too much money and it's only time. And you should have the dedication to succeed. Now, I'm curious, uh, last time we had a lot of product people, software engineers, and a couple salespeople and some recruiters. Please comment what you were working on either right now or what like a commercial skill set could be. Marketing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Marketing is a very good skill. Software engineering, software engineering. Okay. Marketing, financial planning, solid. Director of product, market research and analytics. Arthur, I think that you'll enjoy some of our later uh, uh, business analytics. Yes, a lot of people need business analytics. QA of aerospace content creation strategy and PMO. Okay, so France applying. Oh, wow. Okay, so we have a good diversity of skills. Marketing agent for foreign producers. What does that mean, Ted? Accessibility, CSR, okay. Chat GPT prompt builder. That's all. That'll come in handy, actually. What else? Day trader, okay. Program management, solid. So I wanted to talk about why a digital side hustle. Digital side hustles, you're able to scale very easily. Um, and you don't really need a lot of money to test the ideas. I would love to, yeah, we could talk about that. So you can actually sell your side hustle. There are these websites called Buy, Biz by Sell, Flippa, Acquire.com, Empire Flippers. You can even get them from Facebook groups too. A lot of these side hustles have enterprise value. Let's talk about enterprise value. Enterprise value is basically if you sell your business, then it's usually on and earn, it's on a multiplier of earnings or on revenue, depending on what sort of business you're running. For a technology company, it could be 10x EBITDA. EBITDA is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. Uh, it's a lot of boring finance talk, but basically for simplicity's sake, revenue minus expenses equals net operating profit. Net operating profit minus CapEx or like money that you invest into to make it better uh, equals free cash flow or seller discretionary earnings, SDE. Value or the price that someone is willing to pay is a multiple of SDE or a multiplier of revenue. Will we be getting access? Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, give a, I can give a link to the Google Drive. So it really depends on a variety of factors. If you run a consulting business, for example, it could be between two to three X uh, your SDE. Consulting businesses are great because they're very scalable and you're selling your time, but you can also do something that's called a productized service where you basically sell like packages, if you will, of your, uh, of your service. There's something called designjoy.com, designjoy.com. That's an agency where there's one guy and a bunch of virtual assistants. He, I think, makes about a million per year or a million something per year. So they can be very scalable. And at the end of the, the, the day, you can still sell it as an independent business. So this way, all the time that you have and that you're spending on this side hustle, it has enterprise value, meaning it's not just you're trading your time for money. You can actually sell your book of business. So why do people buy side hustles, online businesses, whatever you want to call it? There's a few big reasons. One is that you're buying an established revenue stream. Usually you're going to be buying a list of customers, uh, which means that you'll get access to their purchase information, purchase history. You'll get their email so that you can market to them. Sometimes if you're buying a SaaS product, for example, you'll get the underlying technology. Um, you'll also get scalability if you currently run an adjacent business. So. There's a lot of different reasons. And sometimes if you're in a predicament where it's build versus buy, do I want to spend, you know, six months building out a brand or can I just buy one? What is easier? What is going to make me more money and how can I save my time? Now I'm curious, what kind of business would you start? 
please comment. Digital agency, holster manufacturing. Oh, wow, that's quite niche. Marketing agency. Cool. So what I like to do, oh, digital book on Amazon. I actually just launched a book on Amazon. I have a side hustle designing apparel and handcrafts, yet to figure it out. Planning consultancy, money making. Okay. A landlord. Um, a landlord isn't necessarily like a digital side hustle. It's more of like you buy a house and then you'll rent it out. It is a side hustle. Consulting with the product strategy, productized strategy you mentioned. Yeah, frankly, that's a pretty good thing. Source directory for spiritual life coaches, mentors, teachers. Startup PMF validation. That's a great one, Aaron, especially in, um, in Silicon Valley. YouTube video. YouTube is hard, but yeah, you can do that. SaaS, SaaS is a great one. Um, a lot of, I've launched a SaaS called, uh, it was socialcycle.io. You can check it out in the web archives. You can check out that website. Basically, it was a SaaS tool for sales engagement for LinkedIn. Uh, and we were aimed towards coaches. We were aimed towards entrepreneurs who utilize social media. So like small companies between one and 10 different people product licensing. Okay. Interesting. So see like one way to validate your idea is to go on these websites. Um, there was empire flippers, flippa.com, white light brokerage. All these are bro online brokerages where you could see what's being sold and you can actually figure out, okay, how much is someone making from this? What are they doing to get that business? What are their numbers? You can kind of reverse engineer it. And then this way, there's market validation. The focus on this bootcamp is for digital side hustles. The reason why is because it's extremely scalable. You can put money into ads or you could use cold emails to reach your, your audience. And it's a pretty cheap way to test ideas. The, the reason why you want cheap and easy to iterate ideas is because not every idea is a hit. If you've heard the saying, ideas are a diamond dozen, it's all about execution. That is true for this particular uh, side hustle. And the formula, it all comes down to one formula. Uh, and we'll go over it in, in the next slide. You can have good multiples too for a digital side hustle, and it isn't really too much commitment. Today in the 22nd, 21st century, we're able to create a business just using a, a a computer, an iPhone, and an internet connection. That is crazy. If you were starting a business in the 1990s or early 2000s, you would need a lot of money to create a business. And now you can just do it from your own laptop. It's insane. And you can eat. And um, the focus of this uh, bootcamp too is also, we want to show you how easy it is to do market research. So let's talk about the formula of testing a side hustle. Um, I came up with this formula because I'm trying to find uh, my next different hustle because you never know where it'll go. And as I was launching these, I was like, hmm, there's a few underlying steps. Let's take a look, shall we? Can everyone see this? The, the benefit of, oh, great. Okay, you guys can all see it. So it's a repeatable process. It's First, you have to find an idea. What is your offer? Number two, you have to define your ICP, your ideal customer persona or profile. You need to figure out who, what's your idea? Who's going to buy it? What sort of problems are they facing? Why would they buy a solution like this? Is this a commercially viable solution? Um, and then once you kind of define your ICP, then you have a market research where okay, like, is this a service that people are willing to pay for? Are there any tools like that out there? If there are tools out there that already do something similar, then it means that the market is validated. You can also check uh, website traffic with similarweb.com to figure out how many hits are people, uh, or how many hits this website is getting. Number four is that you can set up landing pages super easily. There is a product called card.co. C-A-R-R-D dot co. And you can make 
you can make landing pages in 20 to 30 minutes. The problem with the holster biz is repeatable products and massive oversaturation of vendors. Then you need to niche down slightly. Holster, like there, we can figure out how exactly we can go through the holster business. Going back to this repeatable process is once you set up this landing page, you need to go and get your first five to 10 customers. Once you do that, then it's card.co. I put it in the chat. Uh, card.co, C-A-R-R-D.co. It's an easy uh, website building software. It's cheaper than Squarespace and Wix. And you can use a fair amount of templates to design whatever you want. They have landing pages. They have uh, like portfolio websites, all of that. And it's like $48 per month or per year, excuse me. Four bucks a month. There are cheaper plans too. Um once you have your first five to 10 customers, you reiterate messaging based on the feedback. So this is very important because sometimes your first couple email blasts, for example, won't result in any sort of hit. So you want to reiterate all of that. And once you find kind of like what works, what are the pain points of people that, how do they respond to it? Once you have that, then you can sort of scale a little bit more. And then once you've sold someone and once you, you're doing your process initially, then you can build out a standardized process. And then once you have that process, you can hand it off to a virtual assistant, overseas team member, whatever you want to call them. Why not build a website with ChatGPT4 for free? I haven't found any AI website builders that were frankly good. What I'll do is I'll use card.co. I'll put the template with, um, I'll, there's a, a demo page. I'll put that in chat GPT. I'll say, hey, this is a website template that I'm looking to do. Here's my idea. Please give me a couple examples of website copy. And then chat GPT will help you. I don't think that AI is at the point where it'll completely take over lives. Instead, I, the way that I view AI is it augments my workflow and it helps me think of it helps me think in terms of uh, brainstorming and it'll give me different variations. So a lot of it's not um, off the off my head. So the formula, we've kind of gone about it. I like to use cold email to figure out, is this, is this uh, idea good? Does it need, is the messaging on point? Should I change up my website, et cetera? And the point is to get meetings. If you're doing a B2B offering, you want, cold email or cold calling or anything like that. If you're doing B2C, then you can use Facebook ads. The thing with Facebook ads is that it could be very expensive if you don't know what you're doing. And you need to have your conversions tracked out and everything like that. So choose the game that you want to play. I like to look for high LTV and low CAC. Um, LTV to CAC ratio, have any of you guys heard of this term before? We covered it last time, but uh, we may have some new faces. Okay, it's, it's new to Tom. Is it new for anyone else? Okay. So LTV is a total lifetime value of customer. So if you have a hundred, let's for simple math, let's say that um, you're doing, you have a SaaS product that you charge about $100 per month. The average, you make people sign a 12-month contract. So 12 times $100 equals $1,200. Say that you're running Facebook ads, right? And it costs you about $400 per lead. So, so your cost per lead or customer acquisition cost is $400. So $1,200 over $300, $1,200 is your LTV. 12 months times $100 equals $1,200 or $100 times 12 months, $1,200. CAC is 400. Your LTV to CAC ratio is around three. So you want to optimize for high LTV, low CAC. CAC is just simply customer acquisition costs. So there's usually two ways. We've kind of talked about this a little bit uh, earlier. There's marketing and there's sales. These are your two revenue functions. And then you have product. It's the front and, and back. 
Marketing and sales are front end. Marketing can be very expensive and it's great after your product market fit has been validated. There's also a pretty quick feedback loop if you're trying to get uh, conversions immediately. And it's good to test brand and market messaging long-term. With ads and content, it's great if you have a long-term time horizon and ads are amazing to get quick feedback to get scale. With sales like cold outreach, it can be pretty cheap to execute. So with certain cold email tools, for example, you can have a customer acquisition engine for under $100 per month, including leads. There is a slow feedback loop because when was the last time you replied to a cold email? Oftentimes, it's a pretty big volume play. So you need to send out a bunch of emails to figure out, do people actually want my service? Cold email, though, allows you to get one-on-one -on -one with your customers. Now, this may not be scalable at first, but you can get meetings with your customers and you can kind of figure out, okay, hey, they're saying this. I think that I should say this instead in my cold emails. And it allows you to iterate over and over and over, again, provided you have a pretty blue ocean market. It's not as scalable as ads because with the click of a button, you can increase your budget for a winning ad set. And then you're able to get more customers, assuming that your LTV or not your LTV, assuming that your conversion rates stay the same. Um, and with emails, cold calls, LinkedIn, it's great for a short and long-term horizon. A lot of people don't like to do sales. They think it's slimy. Uh, have you guys ever done sales? I'm curious to see what the experience level is of our audience today. Okay. Couple. Okay, we have some solid salespeople. You work in technical sales. That's that's good. So I'm curious for those people who have done sales but they don't like it. What don't they like about it? The product that didn't work. How long does market research product definition take for a software product slash consultancy? I would give it about one to two months of cold email. Dishonesty. I sell my products in person at events and some online through my e-commerce store. So Sharon, I'm curious how you drive traffic to your, to your e-commerce store. Prospecting. Prospecting can be a grind. Cold email allows you to be a little, I don't want to say passive, but it's way easier to do cold email than to do, than to do cold calling. Feels too aggressive and uncomfortable. That can be, that can be worked on. I think sales should be redefined as you're giving value and you, your job is to seek out people who want your product. Selling things that the customer doesn't really need or want and is being asked to force product on them anyway. So is there a disconnect between the product marketing or the product itself? I think that if you have a great product and people actually want it, then they, they'll say, oh my God, thank you so much for showing this to me. Thank you for reaching out. When I worked at SurveyMonkey, I was doing corporate sales for them for about two and a half years. And if I had a product or if I had a person that said, hey, I love SurveyMonkey so much. Thank you for reaching out. We're doing this project right now. That was good product market fit. Quickly dis disqualifying uninterested parties is key. Yeah, my view is get to the no as soon as you can. This way you're not really wasting time. Sales is going to be a very, you have to be blunt at some point. It's not really fun to prospect. It's not really fun to cold call, but the fortune is in the follow-up and you shouldn't feel annoyed with following up. You shouldn't feel like a burden. You should re you should reprogram your mind to say, hey, I am providing these folks a service. And ultimately, if they don't see value in it, then they should, then they're not a good fit. I hate selling, feels slimy. I hate it when trying when people try and sell me something that I don't want or need. Okay. Advertising is a great way, but it also takes up money. In Facebook, my friends are all Facebook marketers. I've run a couple of Facebook ads. You generally need about a couple of thousand dollars to get reasonable data from your pixel. Don't hide from no. In fact, you should go towards no. Um, your, I don't like to be everyone's, I like to be polarizing because this way you automatically seek out the people who 
love you, who are emphatically for your success. Let's talk about, we kind of got sidetracked with uh, sales, but let's talk about increasing LTV. I like to go for higher margin products. Uh, this could be software. This could be a good consulting service. To, consulting service. Uh, and your necessities are to lower churn. You want higher ticket value. So at least, you know, $100, $150. Uh, and if it's sticky in the customer life cycle. So what this means is, in their workflow, it should be something that's a necessity for them. And then if it's, ne if it's necessary for their workflow, then it'll reduce churn. I've heard that the magic ratio for LTV to CAC ratio is around three. It really depends on the industry. Since we have such a wide variety of industries, we're not going to go into it, but perhaps we can cover that during the bootcamp itself. I've kind of talked about cold email. Have any of you guys tried to use cold email uh, before this or how, or the folks that have sold, what sort of sales outreach have they done? Has it been through LinkedIn? Has it been through cold email? Has it been through cold calling, door to door? Only word of mouth and forums. Okay. No cold email or no only cold email, Arthur? Calls with follow-up email. Okay, never done it. It really sucks. What sucks? Cold email or cold calling or sales or just what sucks about it? How do you stay off spam lists with cold emails? We'll go through that actually. In there's a few tools that I use to stay out of spam. And that's like a little bit of the secret sauce I'm going to dive in or that I'm going to share. Never done both. Open to doing it have done it once, but not too successful. Cold email is a volume game. You got to send a lot of different emails. So it's extremely scalable. That's why I love it. So if you guys go to Campus Career Concierge, campuscareer.com, I built this website with card.co using a template, excuse me, and then I sent out about 5,000 emails. I paid maybe $34, $35 per month. And then I paid for leads, which were, I paid $250 for 200, for almost 3000 contacts. I used a VA to do this. But the reason why I like cold email is because it's really cheap compared to ad spend. And I get responses for very cheap. I can get referrals. Yes, I'm interested. No, and why? So this was an email that I sent to um, Central Michigan University. So they actually CC the right person to talk to, which gives me an edge. Campus Career Concierge is a BDEDU offering for students where they can have someone that works with them to apply the jobs on their behalf with that aligns with their long-term goals. How else can you get immediate access to the right decision makers, or if you don't get access to the right decision makers, you are like you're referred to them directly. I have a direct channel to someone who may be involved and it's on me to try and build that business case. And then this is a referral. This is an example of when it actually works. So this is with the University of Kentucky. Unfortunately, spam emailing people in California is illegal. It is if you're doing B2C. If you're doing B2B, if they ask for you to unsubscribe, then you have to abide by that. Cold email is, B2B cold email is perfectly legal, which is why I like to do that. It's how a lot of these enterprise companies, SurveyMonkey, Salesforce, Adobe, they all use cold email to get customers. Cold email is not illegal as long as you have a real reason for their outreach. And as long as you... Uh, have GDPR compliancy. So as you can see, I mean, cold email works. It's just the way that you go about cold email has to be tactical and you also can't be spamming. How do I get uh, targeted lists and how do I qualify them? I have, a, so there's websites that you can use. There's Zoom info, Apollo.io, do we need a real company? You don't need like an LLC. What my 
my idea is I generally try and test. And right before you get a customer or two, or maybe you offer your services as a freelancer. And then once you get enough demand and customer invoices, then you can um, form formalize your LLC. If you live in California, for example, you there's something called the uh, California Franchise Tax Board fee, which means that if just by living in the state of California, you have to pay $800 for having an LLC. It sucks, but it's a cost of doing business. Andrew, a lot of the lists are stale and junk. It really depends on the provider that you're working with. Apollo is decent. Zoom Info is, de is good, but some of the data might be a little older. What you have to do is get your list and you have to also clean it. I sometimes hire freelancers to, to do this off Upwork, or I have a friend who has a, who has a recruiting agency and he helps me. Why not register LLC in Delaware? You can, frankly, LLCs, like until you have some revenue, I don't think it's worth it because at the end, unless you're going to raise venture capital or offer shares, I don't necessarily think that you need an LLC until you're doing a fair amount of uh, volume. But going back to the bootcamp, we're the whole, the whole uh, attraction to this is the fact that we're using AI. How many of you guys have used AI before? And I'm curious what AI tools you guys have used. ChatGPT4, Gemini, Claude, Copilot, Never, Gemini, RapidMiner, Solid, Edison. Okay. Azure. Okay. Chat GPT perplexity. Okay. So everyone's kind of gotten some exposure to digital AI or to any sort of AI uh, model. Validator.ai. I'm learning a lot from this too. There's a couple that I haven't heard of. So people often think that AI is here to replace our jobs. Uh, have you guys seen the product demo for this thing called Devon? It was an AI software engineer. Yeah. What did you guys think of it? Do you think it'll actually... Exactly. I don't think it'll re replace software engineers. Apparently, AI is... Or uh, Devin is in... AI, for people that haven't seen it, Devin, D-E-V-I-N, is an AI software engineer. I don't think it's going to replace it completely, but it's going to augment it. And we're still in early innings. If you guys look at what... Mid journey or stable diffusion was doing in 2023 versus now, huge difference. Exactly. Yeah. Ted is correct. It'll help us reduce man hours. So, why is AI important? It helps you streamline manual tasks. The important thing is to learn prompt engineering. I forget who said earlier, but prompt engineering can be a very valuable skill. And then it's the best way to get results and to re refine what it does. I use custom GPTs to help create flowcharts. In fact, with this, where is the diagram? This was created using ChatGPT, using uh, the Show Me custom GPT. You can also create slide decks too using GPTs as well. So uh, which website? Is it Claude GPT? Show Me Diagram. Oh, Show Me Diagrams. Devin. If you just search up Devin AI software engineer, then you'll find it. So here's kind of what I use. I use ChatGPT Pro, Claude, Gemini sometimes. I like to test all of the, the different models. The way that you can do this is use openrouter.ai. Thank you, Sahil. I like to use Canva to create graphics like logos, sometimes some infographics. They'll, has anyone else used Canva before? Uh, and then with card, we have Namecheap for buying domains. We have, I like to buy templates off some template marketplaces. And now outbound systems. Uh, I like to use this cold email inbox rotation software. So someone had earlier, someone earlier had said that, hey, how do I stay out of spam? Cold email inbox rotation software is how you do it. There's two or three that are on the market. I know of Smart Lead. I know of instantly.ai. There's a few other tools that are out there. I personally use instantly and smart lead. My recommendation and my preference is smartlead.ai. Smartlead.ai. 
So the trick is that you have to buy multiple domains, you have to register them. Within those domains, you want to create different inboxes. I might be getting a little too much in the weeds, but you have to rotate those inboxes. Uh, I can show you guys maybe later at a, at a separate point. And then we also use VAs or virtual assistants. You can use this through, uh, or you can get VAs through Upwork or recruiting agencies. Upwork is simply a marketplace where you can post any sort of job and then people can apply to work on it or to, they can apply for your job. We'll talk about hiring VAs and how I will hire for jobs and maintain quality. How can I protect myself from liability from product sales? Maybe this is covered in the boot camp. It depends on what your liability is, to be honest. Otherwise, like what for software? What is the software? You could probably write some sort of terms and conditions. Do I have a slide? Yeah. So this is the slide. I can create like a a a web not a website a um a list of all of this stuff too. So let's talk about actually using AI in your business with. Some of the stuff, I don't know if it's vaporware or not, but here's some real life actionable tips for what I use uh, AI for. I use it for standard operating procedures for VAs. You can use it for creating FAQs, email and ad copywriting. You can use it for brainstorming. This could be like different angles, different copy for your website itself, data analytics and visualizations with custom GPTs. So you could upload a spreadsheet. You could say, hey, please create a bar graph showing X and Y, for example. And then you can actually have GPT create different prompts that'll help it refine itself, reiterate, and give you an ultimate deliverable. You can create client-facing docs like guides, eBooks, white papers, anything like that. They could create the copy. You could put it in Canva and make it all pretty. Um, you could also do research, like market research on client problems and create their pitches as well. You can do a competitor analysis, ICP matrix. When I was an account executive and GPT just came out, what I would do is I would upload, if I was prospecting, for example, a, a publicly traded company, I could upload or I could send a link to their earnings call or to their quarterly, like their 10Q or their 10K and figure out what exactly they're trying to achieve for the next quarter. ChatGPT keeps your data. I believe, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they do. Correct me if I'm wrong, anyone. But what I would do is take all of this, take all of the information for uh, my prospects. I would ask ChatGPT, hey, what are their key objectives, and is there any back uh, data to back this up? And I would tie that in with my pitch as well. What is Copilot? Copilot is Microsoft's offering for Google with Gemini Workspace. So it's their offering. I think Co GitHub Copilot allows you to do uh, peer program or pair programming for CS. So let's talk a little bit about um, scale your skill set. Why should people join? It's because you can have a community and we'll hold you. You can use AI for prospecting. Yeah, let me go back. So, oh. so. I use chat GPT for prospecting. What I can do is I create an ICP matrix. So this is ideal customer persona. I ask them, okay, who is an ICP? This is my business. Quick little blurb about it. Please give me their strengths, weaknesses, their main pain points. And you can even use chat GPT, chat GPT to create an email sequence too. And there are custom GPTs that are trained on sales data that give you better emails than just manual GPT. So that's how I use it. I also use it when I'm doing prospective pitches as well for what, which AI is best for transcribing videos. Um, there's a couple paid offerings. I forget which ones, uh, it's not on top of my head. So going back to scale, scale your skill set. What is it? We're a cohort focused bootcamp to launch a real side hustle and you'll use AI to help build it. Why join? It's it's just due to community and accountability, and we actually want to help you execute. A lot of courses nowadays, they'll just promise you, hey, like, you know, you have six videos. We're not doing that. 
here are some of the different modules that will, or not the different modules, but here's some of the different topics that we'll cover throughout the course of, of the of the calls. Getting started with entrepreneurship, how to do market research and develop your offer, building your infrastructure with cold email and testing it, how to scale and measure success. So we'll talk about a couple of metrics for sales, for um, what are some KPIs that you need to actually get how to automate, delegate, and then finally figure out what to execute on, defining your ICP, getting customers, and ultimately like building a small business. Once you have, say, call it 10K in revenue, to, how do you formalize your business? That's kind of a, a nice little addition for it. So we ha we'll have four modules. Here, here's what they are. Finding your strengths for what you should sell. Um, more efforts from your time. So scaling your time using... AI, why a one-on-one -on -one offering isn't very good, why you should do one-to-many and a productized, productized service may be one example for that. Module number two is researching your offer, identifying customer pain, pricing. Pricing it has a lot of psychology behind it. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Module number three is very tactical. So it's setting up landing pages using cards, setting up cold email campaigns, getting immediate feedback, how to reiterate that, and finally helping you land some customers. Number four is testing your offer. And if it comes to the point where you become a legitimate business, then fantastic. In fact, Albert has created this, this group, Albert's Lists. And Albert, correct me if I'm wrong, but this originally started out as a side hustle, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it's still a side hustle because I have a day job, but yes. Yeah. So... When people think of side hustle, they think of, you know, small, but a side hustle can turn into something huge and you don't have to quit your day job and you can get the best of both worlds. There, there's a friend that I have that I met on Twitter who he is on pace to make about $110,000 from his uh, side hustle. He does like sales consulting and then he offers a course on how to get into corporate sales using um, using contract stacking. So let's talk about who would be a good fit and why are we different? I'm sure that there's a bunch of these. We will leverage AI, obviously. It's very low risk. Uh, we'll talk pricing in just a second. Um, it's a six hour course. You get real office hours. We're not just gonna leave you high and dry. And the goal is for you to actually have a deliverable. And secondly, there is a website and landing page, call it whatever you want, business idea that I actually wanna test. And I think that with this course, it'll be interesting to launch it alongside you guys. This way you can kind of get into the mind of how I would think about stuff, the tools that I would use. And yeah, so you get a pretty good uh, quote bang for your buck, if you will, with direct access and we'll have an ongoing community as well. We want everyone who enrolls to actually succeed and we don't want them to feel like it is a waste of time. So let's talk about pricing. Yep. We're offering $50 off the uh, the ticket price. We have special pricing just for you guys who are on the webinar. How many folks is that? We have, oh, we have 80. Wow, that's huge. So why you? If you're dedicated to creating a side income stream and are diligent and not going to give up, you're going to persevere. If you want someone to sort of hold your hand and go through it, and if you have a skill set that's commercially viable and you're and you want accountability and community, then this is for you. Let me know. Like what which one of these five would you describe yourself as? Like, do you think that you're dedicated? Do you think that you have some commercially viable skill set and maybe you're a let go? You want some sort of side income? Please comment. I mean. Oh, wow. I'm not seeing much. Viable skills, some business experience. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Additional income stream. Ready to put in the work as it relates to AI. And keep in mind that the skills that you'll learn from this boot camp, these are applicable to your, if you guys will have a W-2, they're also applicable. Like just knowing how to use AI for research, creating SOPs, shifting your thinking into finding processes that can be standardized and handing them off. 
they can help you in your day job. Nine to five employment does feel so temporary. A community could be great. Yeah, and you guys should not be married to simply one idea. The whole goal is to figure out ideas that work. Diversify income stream. Okay, okay, solid. Anyone else before I switch to the next slide? Stay competent. Robin, what is your idea? If you don't mind sharing it, you can. Um, marketing campaign, yeah. Lead gen effectiveness, lead generation is a huge business. A lot of people don't know how to sell. If you're a sales professional, then you can definitely offer lead gen. So we have webinar pricing only of 297. Webinar pricing only. Last week it was 247. This week it's 297. The price will keep going up as we get closer to um to the boot camp. But I know that there's a bunch of people here. If you guys are signing in on the sec for the second week, uh act now. I just want to sell products. I think that is good to niche down. You should figure out what you're good at and what people will buy. A lot of it is a lot of it is selecting your niche. And I like to do B2B because that's my background and it's just easy to scale. If you can do a B2B service, then there should be no reason why you can't hit ten, fifteen thousand uh, dollars in gross revenue. So this is just are you able to help with identifying viable product ideas? Yeah, we can definitely help. During the boot camp, we'll, we'll go with you to iterate through different ideas and we'll actually have a session where you'll brainstorm what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. And we'll actually show you, oh, hey, here's how to use AI. And then I can go through, have a couple of chats and you guys can see the, the thought process of what, what exactly is going on. The question you have is to evaluate viability. You have to test. Ultimately, I can't really tell you. Like, There have been what I think are very dumb businesses, which have done very well. There's a, a guy on TikTok who sells sex chocolate. And I think he's he's uh, making like a million dollars per year in gross revenue. What are the metrics? It all depends. I like to, once again, I like to have high ACV or average contract value. So it's a high ticket item. A B2B offering is generally my preference. I don't like B2C because it's low ticket and you need to have a large volume. I would prefer to have a higher ticket with smaller number of customers so I could focus on better service and the scalability might be through software or it might be through hiring other people. Yeah, you have to test. I can't like that's like the saying. What's a saying what's a good business really depends because my skills are completely different than yours. So what's included, obviously, we've kind of gone over this six one-hour Zoom sessions, cohort group chat, launch your own offer, uh, access to VAs that I have. Will this recording be sent via email? Yes, it will. Uh, please confirm that, Albert. And a done with you offer launch. So next day underwriting is my, is my um, website. So it's a multifamily underwriting service where I'm going to be basically talking about, okay, here's how I created the website. Here are the tools that I used. And I also have templates for standard operating procedures, FAQs, I'll show you how to do prompt engineering to get all these. What are the examples of revenues from your own business? Well, Next Day Underwriting has generated a couple hundred dollars for uh, underwriting. I also have a sales consultancy where I currently have about two clients give or take and they pay me a couple grand per month so it works and it's all been mostly through outbound we can also show you how to do market validation through upwork and through other freelancing sites just so you can get an idea of what people are charging so once again i mean we have a 50 dollar code off the price will continue to increase Share my top three wins and examples of revenue. That's great. So I have a company called Sprint2Sales.com. sprint to sales is a sales consultancy. I make about between two and 4K per month, depending on how many contracts I have. So that's the top three win. Um, campus career concierge. I have 
I had a B2C offering, which I've, that grew to about a, about a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars worth of services sold. And then that lended the process to me creating a B2C EDU offering because B2C was not completely scalable. But yeah. Also, we have a, the goal is to work with you to help you create it. You could learn all of this yourself, but ultimately think of this like a very cheap ticket to streamline all of that knowledge and you get hands-on activities. Act now. Uh, once again, the price will be going up and our classes in the evenings. Yeah, we can do that. We can do 6 p.m., 7 p.m. or 5 p.m. Either or. Yeah. And oftentimes people will say, hey, like, why should I buy a course? Sure. Feel free. You're not forced to buy. But frankly, if you can pay someone for their knowledge and $300 is maybe dinner for four, think of it like sprint2sales.com. Oh, interesting. Um, I'll have to check out the my name sheet. How much effort is required to get all these set up after the course? We'll go through it with you. Now I can get a website set up in maybe like 30 minutes, give or take, including buying the domain. Exactly. Yeah. If you're Gavin Newsom, $300 is nothing. So let's talk about q and I, I heard, I saw a couple questions. Um, I'm sure that we have got a few questions. I'll leave it. We have about five minutes left in the session. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, check up on sprint to sales. I'm sure that there's some questions. It would be, I believe, as long as Zoom, I cannot attend synchronously, I would prefer a self-paced course, okay. Albert, do you want to talk about Eventbrite? I think it was just because it's easiest. Yeah, we so... Offer Go. Yeah, so... Um, uh, yeah, it's on Eventbrite. Uh, the $50 off code is already included within the link. Um, and Eventbrite charges us fees. And so uh, that's, that's generally how we've done sales in the past. Yeah. Um, You'll have access to this intro webinar. We'll follow up via via email, and then uh, we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. I'm also curious, what are some ideas that people have for businesses? Let's talk about that. Drop some ideas for all of the uh, attendees. We have about 67 people. What web pages would you recommend for side project? Why don't you just record six sessions and sell the video so we can get through it faster? Uh, because yeah, we can a do lot that. of we can, yeah. I mean, from what I've seen in some courses that I've taken, there's been a huge benefit to actually having live sessions, and then this way you can ask questions in real time. And for most of the video courses, most people don't even make it through all 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 of them. Can I circle yeah. back for the next round? The other thing control? with um, the other thing with that is, and so if you can't make it this time, we'll figure it out for next time. Um, in regards to live in-person programming versus self-paced, the research that I've seen and done is that the more the more you make it self-paced for somebody, um, there's a lot of people who will sign up, but they won't do it. And we're interested in delivering impact here, so you know. Um, eventually there will be that, uh, that six sessions if you really want to have that separately. And yeah, of course it works for some people. I think I know who's writing these anonymous comments. Um, but yes, we will, uh, we will, we will try our best to accommodate you in, in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Tom, Tom, like what, like that's a very good, um, it's a very good thought process of what's a good LTV to CAC ratio appointment booking virtual assistant you also want to make sure that it's not too saturated um the way that 
you can kind of niche down on that is figure out within my own personal experience, what are some problems that I may have? For example, I was hiring for virtual assistants and a lot of the time virtual assistants are very finicky or the training provided. The, the training that they have is not very good. So I'm working with my friend right now and helping him develop SOPs for the real estate niche, for example, and I'm referring him to business. So stuff like that. Be entrepreneurial, yes. Smart lead, it's smart lead, smart lead AI. Try that or just put it into, into Google. Try that, see if it works. And then next, we're coming up on time soon. So the next steps are to enroll, move faster and break things. Yes. Employment agency, you could do that. So once again, I mean, guys, like the 297, it's fairly cheap for what you're actually getting and you'll get a bunch of value. What did you guys find most valuable from this webinar? Please comment. Well laid out. Okay, that's good. Did we kind of reprogram people's minds about sales? We'll we'll figure out if you can't attend. Maybe we have like a, a different version of this or we can record all of them. What about health insurance agent? You can do that. Steps to get launched. What So the goal of every single webinar that we do is to have at least one tangible thing that you can act on. I'm curious, what, what one thing are you going to take away? I don't care if... As long as you have one tangible thing, it's it's not about uh, remembering most of it. It's just you have one golden nugget and that you can use in the rest of your ventures. What's that? Will you provide links to the sites I mentioned today? Yes, we can do that. Yep. Okay. I think we'll stay on for it's 101. I think we'll we'll give it about 105. Yeah. So <clears throat> Yeah. All right, so we'll follow up. If you have any questions, uh we'll let you know. Oh, where's the link? Yeah, let me go ahead and share that again with all of you. Um here's the discount link. And the code is already written in. Yeah. Cool. All right. So uh, we'll follow up with an email. Let us know if you have any additional questions. Uh, any final thoughts, Mohit, as we figure this whole thing out? I think that it's going to be very exciting. And I'm very excited for the folks that are going to be joining us. Yeah. And it seems like a lot of the people got some value. So that's fantastic. We can talk about what exactly is value and how to, we can do maybe one module on sales and pricing psychology. That would be pretty cool. So. When does a discount link expire? Albert, do you want to answer that? Yeah, I, I have it actually expiring at midnight tonight just to give everyone a little bit of an extension if they want to think about it a little bit further. Yeah. So midnight. So it's 1 p.m. PST. You guys have about 11 hours, if I'm not mistaken. So get that fast. Uh, if I think we may have a do, we may have a Q and A next week. Um, so get it while you guys can today. Otherwise, prices will go up. Yeah. Once again, it's a lot of value. You're going to have access to six hours of class, virtual class, six hours of office hours, a community, 
the goal is for you guys to actually do things and you guys have strengths. You guys just have to realize it. We can lay out the, the track for you, but ultimately it's up to you to take action on it. Taking action is the biggest thing in persevering. If the original idea doesn't work, reiterate and test if something will, as long as you guys don't give up. And uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, cool. All right. So without further ado, thank you so much. We'll have the recording for you. And then we will uh, and then we will go ahead and uh, send that over and follow up. Have a good Friday, everybody, and talk to you soon. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.